This is Galatians number five series. And I want to bring to your attention a book you need. Judaism, Revelation of Moses, or Religion of Men. It will strike you absolutely surprisingly how dictatorial that the rabbis are. And they actually believe that their thoughts are greater than God's. So you need that book. Now along with it, we have a whole series. And I urge you to get this one, Scripturalism versus Judaism. And the reason being is, I've done a lot of reading concerning Judaism in the days of Jesus. This is important to understand because of the truth of the matter is you cannot understand the New Testament unless you have a good knowledge of Judaism. Then if you can find a book, there are no more that I've found available, but if you really want some really in-depth reading, get the book Code of Jewish Law. Gansfried and Golden. Okay? This will tell you everything you need to do every minute of every day. Now then, what's happening that we don't know anything about? Or, let's put it this way that is available to know, but no one is bringing it out. Let's come to Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. Ecclesiastes 1. Now Solomon wrote this, and it's very important for us to understand that there are many other things going on, they're leading to the development of the final generation. <clears throat> Let's pick it up, chapter 1 and verse 8. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 8. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. Now today, if you don't believe that, see how many catalogs you can get from various companies and agencies and manufacturers and see how many things that men have invented and developed and are now selling. I mean, look at how many things we have we just take for granted. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. And what do we have to fill us in with that? Television. Right? Are you tired of looking at it? Well, maybe some program, but you're not tired of looking at it. Okay? And the ear with hearing. And some people are hypnotized by music. And the worst ones are those who drive around the neighborhood with the windows down and they have their radios blasting full blast with a big bass beat. It vibrates the whole house. Okay? That which has been is that which shall be. Now mark that. Okay? And that which has been done is that which shall be done. Now, what has been done in the past that is being done now? I think you're going to be surprised. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it may be said, see, this is new? Well, we have a lot of that, right? However, we don't know what the world was like before the flood. We're only told a little bit about it. But why did God have to destroy everything except for what he put into the ark? 
It said that every thought of man was only evil continually. Now, do we have like that today? Exactly. Okay. It has already been in the days of old that which was before us. There is no memory of the former things. And always remember this, history is written by the victors. If Hitler would have won, guess what the history books would be like? Okay. There is no memory of former things. And that's why people make so many mistakes. See, that's why we have the word of God. Because the word of God tells us what we need to do. What we need to be aware of. It tells us who is God, who is Christ, what is he doing, what is his plan, how do we fit into it, you see. And if we didn't have the Bible, what would we know? Nothing. There is no memory of the former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of the things that are to come by those who shall come afterward. Now let's look at something that is a typical pattern of this world, of religion, and of Satan the devil. Now Dolores and I were watching a special on the Vatican, one of the most corrupt places in the whole world. Corrupt in every way. Remember the book? Uh, what was that? The... Uh, closet in the Vatican that up through the highest ranks they're all homosexuals okay now what's the first encounter with homosexuals that God had to take care of personally Sodom and Gomorrah See, you hear a lot about Sodom but very little about Gomorrah and you don't hear about the other two cities that were destroyed too. See? Because whenever you have a lot of homosexuality, you have a lot of enablers which stand off from it, and they are not involved in it. However, the enablers also suffer a penalty. Now let's come... To 1 Kings 11. Now, 1 Kings 11, Solomon fulfills exactly what he warned of in Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. Now, I often wonder how this happened. Now, remember, Solomon was the son of David through Bathsheba. Now Bathsheba was the wife of Uriah the Hittite that David had executed in battle. We're not told, was she a Jew married to a Hittite? We don't know. Or was she a Hittite married to a Hittite? We're not told. But how could Solomon, who was given one of the best charges in the world to take over after David, and David prepared everything for the temple. God gave him the plans, sent him a lot of gold and silver and iron and brass and everything they needed to make the temple. And he charged his son Solomon. Now here my son Solomon Keep the commandments of the Lord. He had the best start you could ever want. God appeared to him twice because of his humility when he was first taken. And God appeared to him, it was the second time, after the temple was built, and he gave this long, tremendous prayer about the temple. Now then, you would think that a man who had been specially chosen by God 
from his chosen king, David, would be honest, would be upright, would be the best that there ever would be. Now it turned out he was the richest and one of the wisest, but also one of the most stupid. 1 Kings 11. And King Solomon loved many foreign women. Remember what the first thing he did after he was king? Who did he marry? The daughter of Pharaoh. Okay. Even the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Okay, what did God say about that in Deuteronomy 12? You're not to have intermarriage with the people of the land that you are casting out, right? But they didn't listen. Okay, neither did Solomon. Of the nations which the Lord had said to the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, and they shall not go into your, into you. Surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. But Solomon uh, clung to them in love and had his mind changed. See? Now, one thing that struck out when Doris and I were watching this about the Vatican, There was a certain movement, Opus Dei, within the Catholic Church that wanted to clean up all the corruption that was going on. Okay? Because Banco Ambrosio was an independent Vatican bank that had no banking regulations over it. And it turned out to be absolutely corrupt. Okay? So those of Opus Dei, they wanted to straighten it out. So they had certain cardinals that were sworn in allegiance to Opus Dei, even though they had already previously sworn allegiance to the Pope. So they had them and got them elevated in such a way that they could try and clean it up. But they were never able to really do it the way it should be done. How many remember Godfather 3? Okay. They were all involved with the mafia and all involved with everything through this bank. And what happened? the Pope that followed Pope John II. How long was his reign? Remember? 30 days. He must have been one of the Opus Dei who was going to clean it up. As a matter of fact, he said he was going to. And there's no question he was murdered. Now, why do I bring this up? Because that's a typical way that evil comes in. It comes in as appearing good and praising the one that they're supposed to take down so they won't reveal what they're really up to. And getting into positions of power. Now, that's happened over and over and over again, even in business. And it happened within Worldwide Church of God. That's how it was taken down, because the leaders were becoming corrupt and easily swayed. And so it finally went down. Okay? So look at here. Look at what happened to Solomon who started out the very best 
of any of the kings of Israel or Judah. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 4. And it came to pass when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Now think about that for a minute. How would we react if any one of us had a personal vision from Jesus Christ? Okay? And we're told, I'm going to bless you with everything that you need. But if your heart turn away, I will wipe it off the face of the earth. Just to paraphrase which God did twice. Okay? So, that's why one of the greatest lessons that we all need to learn is we must constantly be crucial and honest and loving as God wants us to be to him and to the brethren. And all of those who are elders and teachers need to be the same in teaching the brethren. See? Because after Solomon did what he did, we'll read it in just a minute, what do you suppose the rest of the people did? See? You know, it's just like in our generation. Remember when Wilhelm Clinton got caught? Okay? And he said he didn't have sex when he did have sex. Not direct sex, but the kind of sex that no one gets pregnant. I'll just leave it at that. So what happened? There was a rush of that among the teenage population in America to wear what was one of the greatest venereal diseases that they had for a time. Gonorrhea of the throat. Okay? So imagine what the population here did when Solomon was doing this. Solomon went after Ashtaroth. Now that's the female deity. Like the Catholics have today, worshiping Mary, the queen of heaven. Well, she never ascended to heaven. She'll be in the first resurrection. Now, I bring this out because you're going to be surprised what I'm going to read on a current report. The goddess of the Zidonians and after Milcom, the abomination of the Amorites, and Solomon did evil. In the sight of the Lord and did not go fully after the Lord like his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh. Okay? Interesting. What happened? His wives and concubines, you talk about being henpecked by a thousand women. I mean, no man on earth must have been more henpecked than him. I mean, think about it. <laughs> They all wanted their own way. And so they said, well, you have your temple. Now you got to build one for me, for my God. So here's the Temple Mount. Here's the Valley of Kidron on the east. And here's what is later called the Tyronean Valley on the west. And on the west there was another mountain. And that's where Solomon built all the shrines and altars of sacrifice for the other gods. And that became known as the Mount of Abomination. Okay. 
So let's just ask a question here. Why is it, why is it that people cannot stay faithful to God? What is it about human nature that always goes against God? Okay. Well, none other than Satan, the devil. He's the author of it all. Okay. So that's what he did. In the hill which is before Jerusalem for Moloch. And what did they offer to Moloch? Their children. See? Once a little bit starts, what does it grow to? We have one feast that if we keep the right way, we won't let it get out of hand with us. Called what? Feast of unleavened bread, because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. This is what happened to the whole nation of Israel. See? The abomination of the children of Oman. And likewise he did for all, you might want to circle that, his foreign wives and burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Now, think about how apostate that was. Look at it today. Have you ever met people that you knew once long ago in the church? And now where are they? Well, they're back in the Protestant churches. A lot of them. See? Because they didn't learn the lesson that the tree that the world eats of is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Like one man who was a minister in the church, and he called and talked to me, and his wife talked to Dolores, and he said, well, we go to this Baptist church now, and he says, they have a lot of good things. I didn't say a thing to him. With that, with that kind of attitude, I figured, hey, let him go his own. Okay? Just because you may see some good thing that may even be in accord with the word of God does not necessarily mean it's something you should do. Okay? Because it can lead to another trap. Now, a little sidebar on how the Catholic Church works this. They have Catholic charities to help the poor, right? Can you point to the Bible, help the poor, help the widows, and help the, the fatherless? Yes. Okay? This is how they cover a lot of their sins in politics and thievery. But, like with Mother Teresa, they had a money-raising thing in New York City that they would send out and all oh, help the children in India and you know all these poor starving little children and they get them with these gaunt eyes and thin limbs and hardly any clothes on them and so people send in money like crazy but where did it go it went to Banco Ambrosio the Vatican Bank and what did they do with the money? They invested in the stock market. Okay. Now, if they would have taken that money and invested it, and then take all the profit from that to say, here's a continual investment that will be used, and any profits from it goes to the poor and the widows and everything, that would be a different story. But a lot of the money in Bank Ambrosio went to also finance mafia things. Why is it whenever a mafiosa is buried, there's always a Catholic priest there? I'll let you figure that one. Nothing new under the sun. Okay? Verse 9. 
And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. And he commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. I'm sure there were priests who told him, don't do it. I'm sure that there were prophets that God raised up to tell him, don't do it. Okay. <clears throat> that he should not go after other gods, and he did not keep that which the Lord commanded. So what happened? Now notice, this is important. And the Lord said to Solomon, since you have, this has been done by you, and since you have not kept my covenant and my statutes which I commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and give it to your servant. And he did, didn't he? After Solomon died. And the ten tribes of Israel, 232 years, they didn't have a single righteous king. How did they start out? Did they start out with repentance to God? No. They started out with two golden calves. One in Dan in, in the north, and one in... Uh, uh, Bethel in the south. Now Bethel means house of God. Okay. So you see how the societies get all led astray from what is right. Now then, let's see a repeat today by different people, different characters, but the same result. Now this is going to be quite a surprise to you. Okay? What was one of the things that Martin Luther had on his 95 theses that he nailed to the door of the Wittenberg Cathedral? Mary worship. As one of the things you shouldn't do. Okay, Luther, middle 500s A.D., here we are, 20 years in to year 2000, and here's the headline. Lutherans now promoting praying to Mother God. And wiping Israel from the New Testament. See, once you take the word of God and you make it in your mind and in your practice and in your worship not the word of God, and you have commentators and theologians and experts tell you, because they're not converted and they don't fear God, that you don't have to keep the laws of God. Okay. Now we'll cover part of that today when we get to it. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America continues to stir up controversy with its progressive policies. That's satanic. Okay? And are pushing members who want to hold to sound doctrine that they have no choice but to leave the denomination. Okay, so there's some people who believe in the truth to enough degree that they don't want to go along with it. But the problem is they've already been removed from God from Sabbath to Sunday for how many years? Okay. Several weeks ago, the Danish Bible Society, which is run by the Evangelical Lutheran Church, came under heavy fire for uh, the Danish translation. Now, isn't that interesting? Denmark. They didn't even connect Dan with one of the tribes of Israel. Okay? For the Danish translation of the Bible that virtually wipes out Israel from the New Testament. In the Greek New Testament, the word Israel occurs 
more than 60 times. However, it is found, I'll let you guess, how many times in the New Danish translation? Three. Nope. Once. What does it say in the last verses of Revelation? Woe to those who add to or take away, right? Okay. The New Danish version called Bibli 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 2020. That's right. Just once. And that one occurrence is a direct quotation from the Old Testament. Otherwise, Israel is gone. Now, I want you to stop and think. How important are the books written by the churches of God about America and Britain and the ten tribes and prophecy? See? Those are so important. But how is that labeled by the religious community? Oh, there's nothing to that. You don't have to pay any attention to it. Okay. Okay. The reason for this is that the society argues that Christian readers must not connect Israel in the New Testament with the nation of Israel today. Well, you must connect it with the tribe of the Jews, right? You must. And the Levites who are with them, maybe a few Benjamites, so forth. Okay? They have no understanding of the ten tribes of Israel in the end time. See? A little leaven leavens the whole lump and look where it goes. Okay? They say uh, it is because they have long promoted replacement theology, which is the church replaces Israel. No, it doesn't. The covenant that God made with Abraham runs through the covenant that God made with Israel and through the promises given to the 12 tribes of Israel found in Genesis 49 and Deuteronomy 33 for the last days. Okay? Look at all the prophecies in Isaiah that are for what we know as the millennium. And you can go on and on. The church has not replaced Israel. The church covenant is in addition to Israel. Though a good number, perhaps the majority, of the first converts were Jewish, and later than the Gentiles, and later than some of the tribes of Israel. And there's a good deal of history to show that right after the time that Paul was in prison in Rome, when he got out the first time, that he actually went to the British Isles. And they had a church at Cornwall established by Joseph of Arimathea, and Paul went there. Now, John Gunther has that all in the history that he just sent to us. So you see? Okay. So they say, the ancient Israelites are not linked in any substantive or material way to the contemporary modern state of Israel. Well, if that is so, why are they called Jews? Okay. The biblical narrative of Israel has almost nothing to do with contemporary Israel other than the 
intentional manipulation of sacred text to justify a political project. Okay? See, because, now why do they say that? What is a typical thing that most detractors always do? The ones they're detracting from, they accuse them of what they're doing. Okay? Isn't that what is happening today with the president? Everything that they were doing, they accused Trump of doing. So they do it here. There are other significant problems with this translation, including the removal of, the, of words like sin, which becomes watered down to be merely a mistake. Now the church is raising red flags with the promotion of praying by addressing God as mother instead of father. Now remember the book, one of the first uh, uh, unisexual New Testaments that came out where they said, uh, we're, we're not, we're, we have to incorporate unigender. So how they handled it with the father is this. They handled it Instead of our father, it's our mother slash father, and the reader could make up his mind what he wanted to choose. Okay? Let's continue. Mother God, you have, here's the prayer. Mother God, you have fed us with the nourishment of your spiritual food. Remember what Paul said about receiving a different spirit, and where does that different spirit come from? It is a spirit. It's satanic and demonic and supernatural. So yes, if they're deceived into believing these things, then they will think God is working with them. But it's not the true God. It's the God of this world. Raise us up into salvation and rid us of our bitterness so that we may share the sweetness of your holy word with all the world. Okay. The presiding bishop of the Evangelical Church of America, Reverend Elizabeth Eaton, has expressed her belief that although hell may exist, it's entirely empty now because God doesn't give up on those who reject him. The statement came from a recent interview for the podcast, Face to faith. Okay? Last year, the Westview Lutheran Church, Boulder, Colorado, ordained the nation's first transgender Latina pastor while the Park Church, a Lutheran ministry in Greenpoint, uh, Brooklyn, held its first drag queen story hour with drag queen, the Reverend Yolanda who is known for her, her, quote, church with a two-drink minimum slogan. In other words, you must come here and get drunk. All right? Now, let's come clear back to the New Testament. Let's come to Revelation 17. Okay, because this shows a historical projection of Babylon the Great coming from ancient Babylon down through all time to ours. Okay, and this is why John became so astonished. Let's read it. Verse 1. And one of the seven angels who had the seven vials came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, and I will show you the judgment of the great whore who sits upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. That means they recognize them, they work with them, that that's all part of the civilization. Okay? And also, in this special that we were watching, 
it they showed precisely how Mussolini and the Vatican work and how precisely Hitler and the Vatican work together. And it was no surprise to the Catholics that Hitler was exterminating the Jews. They wanted that. But they're always two-faced, and so when they were about ready to get caught, they started all of these things of helping Jews escape. But they didn't tell you about how they help all the leading Nazis who were involved in it escape. Come down through Europe into, into uh, northern Italy, get their identification changed, and guess where they went? Argentina and, and Chile. Okay. Kings of the earth committed fornication, and those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. In other words, they never had, isn't that interesting? What did she say? The drag queen? Minimum two drinks? Well, what if you have four or five? Suppose you're drunk? Well, what they say today is this. If you have a buzz, you're drunk. How about that? Wine of her fornication, false doctrine, idolatry, all of that. Then he carried me away into, in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns, full of names of blasphemy. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you something a little later here, which we'll get into right after the break. That all religions are coming home to Rome. And guess, I'll trigger a little ahead of time. Guess which church you would least think would come to Rome? The Mormons. You'll find out about that in a little bit. Okay. Now she was adorned with golden pearls and uh, precious stones, and she had a golden cup in her hand filled with abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And across her forehead a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Guess what? All the daughters are coming back to Rome. Okay. Not to be ruled over by mother, but everybody together. What's that going to form into? The one world religion. It's going to come like we have never expected. Okay. It's going to be something. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and take a little break and we'll come back and we'll continue the story and then we will connect this with Galatians 4. <laughs> 